the moment to introduce our panelists so we can get to the real main attraction this evening. Um, as I say, we've got Guillaume, Nicola, and Oliver, uh, and rather than saying it for them, I'd like to invite them up now and uh, we'll hear a bit from them each. Thank you. Um, quickly, before I, uh, well actually, uh, let's start with intros. Uh, do you want to say a few words about your background and what you're up to at the moment, Guillaume? Sure. So, happy to be here. Um, background, um, economist by training, and then worked in investment banking for a few years, then created my own company, was more than 10 years ago. Um, my business is investing in early stage startups, uh, mainly in Switzerland, um, only in software, and with a strong focus on, on fintech. We have about 15 fintech companies in the portfolio right now. We have an office in Silicon Valley, and we help our Swiss startups to make that bridge to the US. Next to this, we created, as John mentioned, uh, Fusion, uh, fintech incubator in Geneva, uh, late 2014, early 2015. And it's been growing well uh, since then. Great, Nicola. Hi everyone, Nicolas. Um, I studied physics in Lausanne, EPFL, been working for seven, eight years, and uh, consulting in corporates in the last seven years, uh, been working for startups. Uh, in the management, uh, last station was a Movu uh, moving platform, which I've been one of the co-founder, and still the president, which has been uh, exited this year to the Balwas Group. And since one year, I'm the managing director of Digital Switzerland, uh, the association you might maybe know, based in Zurich and Lausanne. Thank you. And Oliver. Yeah, my name is uh, Oliver Wisman. I'm over almost 30 years in, um, in the high tech and financial <coughs> service industry as uh, IT executive um, with IBM, SAP on the high tech side, and Deutsche Bank, Allianz, Allianz Global Investors, and uh, UBS, from small to large cooperation, I would say, globally in different region. And since I left UBS end of last year, I set up my own advisory business, focusing on uh, corporates helping <coughs> them uh, to develop and transform their digital business. And uh, and then I would say the last few months also helping startups, especially in the blockchain arena, to uh, uh, grow, position themselves and, and mentor them. Great. So quite a distinguished panel, very diverse panel as well. Um, but before I start to really grill them, I wanted to sort of stage things. We talk about fintech here, really. Uh, we'll dance over into blockchain and into other subject matters as well. Um, <coughs> but uh, about a year or two years ago when we got started on all of this, a lot of people would say the challenge that we were approaching, the reason why we were doing a lot of this was because Switzerland should have more activity in fintech. And I think um, not only the examples on the panel here today show that there is more happening around fintech broadly, uh, but we can think of others like the accelerators out there, the investments, the startups, the other things that are going on. Uh, and I wanted to actually ask the question this year when we got into this debate, um, to what degree, and this goes to the audience actually, to what degree do you think that Switzerland should have the ambition to be a top five fintech hub around the world? Who, th who thinks that's a good ambition, if I could get a quick show of hands? All right, cool. Um, I think actually if we were to look in at blockchain in particular, we've probably achieved that, right? Uh, it's certainly one of those destinations around the world that people think of. Uh, but we talk time and time again about other topics like insurance and wealth management. Um, and so it's nice to hear, I, I think the panel would tend to agree that that's achievable to, to get up there as we have in blockchain and other topics. What do you think, Oliver? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a great opportunity um, here in Switzerland, especially around, um, you know, I'm speaking more for the blockchain technology and cryptographic technology. We set up an association beginning of the year uh, because we realized that um, to be successful, all the ingredients and services are in one place. Uh, this, the Ethereum Foundation a few years ago set up, there's now an ecosystem around the startups, legal, tax, accounting, marketing, KYC, utility, uh, that at the end we have all the ecosystem player uh, in Switzerland. And that was the reason to set up this um, beginning of the year to grow that ecosystem amongst those players from startups, services, corporation, research, R&D, and yeah, create jobs. Jobs, startups, capital, uh, position, uh, Crypto Valley as a brand globally, because we, um, we are thinking this is not just a, a Zook specific uh, initiative, this is a, a Swiss wise. We have now opened up uh, chapters in Lugano and uh, in Geneva. Um, this has to be connected with other European hubs um, uh, in the world. 
and um, I think I think we as a team were blown away with the um, success and also the progress. Um, we started with um, 10 members in March, so we did announcement, we um, heavily losing, using social media, uh, community, etc. So we are now at <coughs> 550 members, so we're growing 50 to 90 members per month. So it's really, uh, it's getting momentum. We're getting, um, I would say, 5 to 10 requests per day uh, from startups moving over their business to Switzerland. So we built mm. an onboarding guideline that whatever is need needed to bring your business over, it's described there. Sure, there's still challenges, I would say, but I think uh, something that we want to make sure. Plus, we see now not only um, buses coming from China, <coughs> coming to Zouk, uh, it's now all over the world, I think I would say. Even the US um, companies, investors are, uh, want to meet startups, the government here. Um, and then also the whole meetup community is something we started with, I think, 200 people on the meetup. We are now at 1,500. So our events are usually 140, 160 people attending. So it's, it's big. And, um, and then, again, what we did is more in a decentralized way. We empowered our uh, folks to set up working group in the case of um, the whole startup onboarding investor the regulatory one is the, 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 the hot focus, I would say, because we're working on classification of the token business um, because the ICO topic was another catalyst over the last few months. Sure. That, uh, uh, the access to risk capital that usually uh, you have to go through a, a VC, I'm sorry to say that, um, uh, uh, access to VC is more now access to a global a pool of capital. And that is a game changer yeah. from my perspective. And, and I would say, looking at the ICOs itself, besides the bigger ones, uh, there's a statistic coming out mm -hmm. next week from PwC saying that in Europe, we are the number one mm -hmm. place, Switzerland. Uh, um, definitely number one is the US. But it's important, if you look at the ecosystem, you have to uh, get access to talent, money, uh, resources. Um, you need all the different dimension in place to to attract business and grow the community. And I think, I think we are in a position here in Switzerland with the support of the government. The government is pro-business. Mm -hmm. um, I, I never thought, um, you know, I've lived many years outside Switzerland and that you can approach them, talk about tax ruling, talking about um, how, you know, you can even now set up your business with Bitcoin and Ether in Souk. Yeah. Uh, that's something, I, you know, it's, you don't find outside. So you can approach them, the government is problem solving, you talk to different areas. So uh, the way we operate in the help yourself, decentralized way, mm -hmm. different than Singapore, which is more top down here, you have 250 million, take it and build something here, it's more That's okay too. Now. And there's something that I believe is more sustainable because it's, uh, people are behind that. So overall, if you asked me a year ago, because we start doing setting up the association that time, mm -hmm. that we have this momentum and um, being accepted in the community as a go-to uh, organization, and um, um, yeah, I, we spent uh, almost two hours on, on Monday with the uh, Swiss government uh, talking about uh, blockchain and and crypto and ICOs. This is an important topic because it's changing business models, it's changing market structures, and it's a great opportunity um, to attract new business for a country like Switzerland. So overall, <coughs> I would say excellent year, and um, I have to say I didn't expect that so fast, so mm. accelerating the last uh, few months. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think it's great to see that success on the, on the crypto side. Um, going to play the devil's advocate here because my um, my deception is what's happening on the wealth management side it's a, it's a, I think it's a failure so far um, we have also all the ingredients here we have the knowledge we have the end clients being Swiss customers being international customers we know how to deal with multi-currency we know how to deal with different cultures we've been managing money for private individuals for years so we should have been the hub for wealth tech. Mm -hmm. And it has not happened. We haven't seen any good, you know, any good, no, any uh, 
great success so far um, from Switzerland, but we also have, haven't been able to attract, as you did, um, attract external talents at scale uh, on that particular topic. Uh, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. It's a question of, um, <coughs> sorry to interrupt you, but it's a question of um, sense of urgency, understanding the opportunities. Correct. No, because yeah. um, if you look at, if you talk to the startups here, um, and then see which industry they're going after, and and now also working as an advisor with banks, this discussion is now slowly um, shifting from, you know, there's a fancy new technology out there, we can just add more functionality to our existing model, mm. uh, is slowly moving into, okay, how the market structure will be, if I apply a decentralized business model, how this will look like, uh, what kind of players will disappear, what's my role in that value chain, <coughs> I think that's, it's coming slowly, but there will be tipping points in certain industries. And I would say, I think next year we have to watch the whole crypto asset management. Uh, uh, because that's something that now establish players <laughs> out of UBS and Credit Suisse building their own business. Because it's not getting fast enough, they're not getting yep. enough traction in the established environment because there's a lot of fears, etc. And see an opportunity to build something more simplified. Um, I think those kind of opportunities you, we will see more next year, uh, but at the end it, it requires how much risk you want to take on as an established player like in the wealth management no? uh, and see this opportunity as long you make good money, your bonus pool is still three billion, yeah, yeah. then uh, how much you want to really uh, uh, challenge I, I agree with this, but I was not talking about the, 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 the big players, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed about the, the, start the startup ecosystem oh, the on the wealth okay, management okay, side. Okay, okay being from Switzerland or also being able to, to attract external good startups in wealth management where we have the whole ecosystem here. I, th I think if, if I, I agree blockchain, crypto, I would say top three in the world so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. Fintech B2B, <coughs> we have good solutions, not worldwide present, but good solution. Yeah. And Fintech B2C, I would say we're quite weak. We don't, we don't have a Revolut, we don't have a number 26. So again, we don't have the critical mass, we're a small country, it's regulated, and it seems FinTech B2C, we're not top five. Yeah, so and we don't have a betterment. We don't have a not make, yeah, we don't yeah. have a betterment. Yeah, some so we have some, but... Yeah. There's structural ch uh, challenges. I think yeah. I see the whole wealth management retail market in Switzerland well protected. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's <coughs> a very profitable marketplace. If you look at Absolutely. how much the local players are making from a retail perspective, you'd never make this kind of business in Germany and other countries. Why should I open up? Now, we have had a discussion uh, in the FinTech Roundtable. Why should we open up an open API environment for Switzerland? <coughs> the established player asking. But you need this open environment that a better man or somebody can inject themselves mm -hmm. yeah. and offer a different services. But if you yeah. try to not to allow that, yeah, no one is and nobody that. in the rest of the world is becoming more an integrator. Yeah. So you, you offer uh, key services outside to other people in the of your bank customers and other ecosystem, but you also integrate services that's not becoming core for you or anymore. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a new platform, open architecture play. But that mindset doesn't exist here. No. I have to say, that if you go to London, the, the, even the government from a monopoly perspective, they're saying, we want that open competition and that drives investment, that drives uh, startups going there. And um, this, this environment is very profitable, it's moving, but it's hard to attract. And that's my personal, Correct. No, I agree. it has nothing that, to do uh, with crypto or mm, blockchain, uh, it's um, based that, on my... And that's the risk, it seems we won't have good startups made in Switzerland for, for B2C mm -hmm. and we might be disrupted from abroad. Mm -hmm. So and that, I think that's rather a risk than top five today, to be honest. Yeah, because if you don't go in that direction, how can you go through the learning curves and build these capabilities? Uh, and then if someday the, the floodgate <coughs> is open, because you have to, because you're part of a European community, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, then, then that this, this will be more challenging. Yeah. 
I have a question, actually, to start off with you, Oliver. Um, it was an undeniably huge year, as you alluded to in your first uh, comment for the crypto scene in Switzerland. Um, in the long run, what would you say was more important uh, a development? The price of Bitcoin recently that we've been talking about or the flow of ICOs that we saw earlier in the year? I would say I think the it's both together because at the end, um, uh, the attractiveness of the Bitcoin um, attracted a lot of investors going into the token business. Uh, but I, I would say access to um, this global pool of capital, I think, is, is one of the biggest changes that I've been through the last 12 months. Um, because, um, and I would say there's a good and a bad side. No? The bad side is, um, it, it reminds me of uh, everybody being through this 20 years ago with the internet startups. Everything uh, with the name internet, you know, people investing new market etc and and the the performance went up because demand and supply was was driving up the prices and we see this here too that the quality of of a business proposal by papers are not sufficient i would say and i guarantee we will see a 90 percent plus fallout like 20 years ago uh, but there will be unicorns coming out of this and i think we will see my prediction for next year is that the whole ico business will be more regulated, which we also requested um, <coughs> before Tesla's blew up in September. We were, we were coming that, we saw that, um, that, that misuse. And, um, and we, we are saying that I think we have to find a middle ground between shutting down this kind of access and wide open. Mm -hmm. This has to be regulated, has to be investor protection. Um, uh, but I think from the transparency uh, from a communication point of view, KYC, K, um, uh, AML, it should be like a traditional business too. But, so what I'm saying, my prediction is we will see this ICO business um, be more professionalized. The regulator will apply those requirements and standards, existing one, uh, but it will morph into IPO 2.0. So I believe that uh, people with um, IPO background, price book building, uh, uh, price calculation, etc., uh, will come in and will professionalize that, like we see already in the cryptocurrency trading. Mm -hmm. And but it would leverage the uh, the ICO as a digital platform because it's simplifying uh, an IPO in the same dimension will maybe cost seven to ten million, an ICO maybe a million. And so there is a there's a speed, there is a cost, there's mm -hmm. a there's a, there's a greater access to a, a pool of capital than we have in a traditional environment. So I believe that this will evolve and needs guidance, it needs uh, structuring, but, um, but it will be the catalyst for our startup community. Great. So that's a big change that I can see. Uh, Nicholas, I wanted to actually touch uh, with you. It's been, I realize, a full year now for you with Digital Switzerland, and I think people would generally agree it's been a pretty great year for the organization. There's been impact made, it's been maturing and, and having more of a presence. Um, looking back, what would you say were some of the biggest successes that you've been involved with or the organization has really done on a high level, let's say? So, um, first of all, <laughs> one year ago we had about 40 members, corporates, now we have uh, 96, so a nice growth. Uh, more, more important is, is the content. Uh, wh where do we have impact? I would say just three rights now. The first one is on the political side also. Uh, we, are, we are very close from Doris Leuter, Schneiderraum on the Bayer Digital Transformation. There are major topics. Of, of course, ICO regulation is one of them, mm -hmm. but also the 5G infrastructure. Uh, without 5, uh, 5G, there won't be any autonomous driving the next year, so we need this one <laughs> quite quickly. Uh, as an example, our contingency for foreign people from third countries, I mean, just as an anecdote, in the canton of Zurich every year after March, uh, and if you see Google hiring like uh, incredibly like today, uh, there is no contingent anymore. Today, okay, it's December, but since two or three months, it's almost impossible to hire someone from a third country. So there are many political topics which are besides Capital, it's about talent, it's about Swiss talent mm -hmm. and foreign talent. Uh, we need people from all over the world and more than today. So many topics, I would say it's one of them, working a lot and very intensively uh, with the government and sometimes with the uh, cantons. Another one was a Kickstart accelerator, also with, uh, with Basel about biotech, with Lausanne about education technology, also working with you guys, Fission. I think the acceleration is a nice concept. Uh, it's doing everywhere in the world, to be honest, but we need to do it. 
uh, we have many corporates being part of the accelerators and it's important for the tractions having more startups Swiss and from abroad coming here establishing the business and uh, ramping up and raising money and hiring people and the third one was there uh, something quite different but a digital day maybe you've seen it uh, was something is still something for the population <coughs> also for the economy but mainly for the population mm -hmm. we reached out 200,000 people on the four stations Geneva, Zurich, Lugano, Cour. Uh, we estimate about one to two million Swiss people have seen it or has been sensibilized. Wow, okay, what, what's all about? Uh, Martin Fetteli speaks al always uh, again, the, what's coming now is a digital tsunami. If the world is fine, we can talk about it, but that's the reality. It's a tsunami and it's going incredibly quickly and either you're in or you're out. Uh, and, and the digital day was, I think, one of the biggest success this year for us. Great. Biggest roadblocks or, or challenges, you think? And I think you mentioned pol politics and some of the uh, rules of the game that we have to deal with. Anything that you continue to see as challenges that need to be addressed? Okay. I mean, it's, it's always the same equation for corporates, SMEs and startups. It's about talent, it's about capital, and it's about the conditions. So if one of them is missing, you have troubles and the challenge is to get all of them uh, like why is so growing up is because you have the you have the capital the capital yeah. not everything is is white some black but it's nice yeah. and now it's about the talents huh? uh, we need more talents yeah. as the next steps and we seems to have soon the condition so two or three maybe three huh? yeah I, I agree that's the challenge the, the we had a discussion at the fintech round table this um, Bundesrat Maurer on <coughs> that and, and and the conclusion at the end after 90 minutes was he was proposing as an SVP guy, um, we should have a fintech uh, lex to get more, like an H1B, more tech people coming into Switzerland. Because I think the, the demand for this kind of technology expertise <coughs> is going up. I think um, there's a reason why a lot of uh, US firms try to get people from our universities. I think there is, there is great talent, but it's, we need more, more people of that. So the, you're right, capital is one thing. Um, talent is one thing that has to be there and bring those people together huh? and, and conditions then, yeah. in the conditions no? sure. and then I think then I think then you have a flourish environment that attracts more people to come over yeah. and that's exactly what we want yeah. independent of is it fintech is it blockchain etc if if those dimensions are working yeah. and I think I've been th we have been through this in a in a in a in a in a focus <coughs> way I would say um, then I think you have a chance to yeah to become a player. I agree. So I think maybe another challenge, it's maybe not the main topic today because we're more startups in corporate, but we should be careful about SMEs. SMEs is still 90% or 70% of the jobs in Switzerland. There was a terrible uh, study from UBS a couple of weeks ago, like 60% of them just like don't care about digital, uh, about the, what, what's, what's happening and it, it's quite freaky. I don't believe it's so much, to be honest, it's always about interpreting the questions, but still we should be careful about SMEs. Having a, a very strong startup ecosystem is, is our goal. Having strong corporates is very good, but we should be careful about the SME environment. There are many jobs. There's a reason why tech players are going after the SME business, because uh, they have all the data points mm -hmm. that, uh, and try to, to get even more, yeah. and, uh, bigger share out of that business. I agree, I think this is, uh, I see more and more fintech services for SMEs or digital services important. coming up important and uh, um, around marketplaces. Yeah. So that's something that, that I think yeah. we, we should also keep in mind Absolutely. is um, we should not think about an established uh, industry lines. Right, great point. No, because I think um, you know, we try to digitalize what we have today, but we ignore that um, IoT, Internet of Things, blockchain, AI becoming the integration layer. So, so there's a study out there from McKinsey, a year old, saying that uh, until 2025, there will be 12 new ecosystems globally will emerge. 170 trillion US dollar new business. Uh, so, and existing industry will form new ecosystem. And I'll give you two examples that I think it's now happening. happening and, we, and Swiss companies are part of that. Number one is, um, the whole mobility space, which is another four trillion of new business, is all about how you integrate the different transportation into one user experience. So the biggest fear of Mercedes-Benz is globally that Google will aggregate them. 
from train, uh, flight, car, hotel, that you have an experience from Zurich to London, you can manage this in a seamless way. And now they're working with startup here, with Deon uh, Digital, out of, uh, out of this uh, ecosystem, to use smart contracts, to integrate the different services out of different verticals, uh, and they are running, they want to set up a new business network. Financial services would be part of that. Payment, insurance, if you have to rebook on the fly, if there's some delays, etc. So there's a totally different model coming up. The same also in smart home, B2B, B2C. You see that, that it's not enough enough today to digitalize what you have. <coughs> You have to team up. You have to team up with other players mm -hmm. in your geography or other industries, and that's that's something that I, I can see more and more because that's uh, the technology is, is bringing you. You're moving into an integrated real-time world, and that's for certain players, especially in fintech or in uh, financial services, will be a huge change because we're talking then about open integration. We're talking about real-time execution. So even you know the two buzzwords. What does it mean for a bank? And we're talking about just to still keep our environment closed. Yeah. I think we'll miss a point. Huh? That's, that's something that I see as an opportunity, and, but that means that you evolve to, to see them and be open for them. <coughs> I think you raise a, a good point in having the different industries also learning on each other. Yeah. And I have the feeling that most industries thinking about digital just think about their industry where some other industries have been through that already for a few years, yeah. like the media, yeah. right? Yeah. And I've been very surprised in the financial services where people just start to learn about social media and all that thing, right? It sounds brand new, but it's, it's technology or products that we've been packaged for the media industry seven years ago, just coming in, in fintech, raising big amount of capital for something that's just repackaged. And, and I think that's part of the learning curve we should uh, and I think it's, it's what an organization like you uh, perfect, yeah. is providing, right? It's enabling different industries to talk to each other and learn from <coughs> best practices. Yeah, whether it's crypto or whether it's finance and technology, we really believe that strongly as well. The finance industry and the technology industries already have a long history of working with other industries. And as you say, Oliver, there's this incredible opportunity built around ecosystems. And uh, <coughs> the more you can adapt, the more that we can open that up for Switzerland. I think they really do have the core capabilities to compete and use this as a real opportunity. John, we, have a, we have a need to also educate. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is not just a tech play. Right. Uh, tech play is, I you know, do incremental changes of new functionality, etc. So the established way of doing business. <laughs> I think we have to move away from from that. Is not only that we have to look at new business models, embracing other ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Is um, I think we will have much more discussion. Like 20 years ago, with the internet, had a different business model. It's more the hub and spoke. We're moving to the opposite direction. Right. And a decentralized one, and that requires for um, um, for most of us rewiring our brain. And something that I believe for a community like us is one of the challenges 2018 to explain mm -hmm. why why uh, what does it mean that the middleman <coughs> is disappearing, and how this will organized. And there's no hub and spoke anymore if I see those going through those models. And again, we are still in the, in the adjustment and learning phase, now don't get me wrong, but I can see that even in non-financial industry, in the supply chain, uh, that there will be a radical change that already those suppliers are trying to go after. But don't you think that the middleman never disappears? It's just an, another middleman coming in. Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, um, there is no black and white. Mm. No, that we have a central model, that we have <coughs> A lot of people in the middle, or we have nobody. The cyberpunks are more on the on the radical right side, say, on the right on the side saying there is no middleman. I think there will be something in the middle, uh, providing s s definition of smart contracts at the end that will be used. But it will be different, and you have to justify your value to be still be part of that value chain. Uh, the, the guy in the middle is then the, 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 the contract, the smart contract, the machine, no? the technology. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Providing this and that's on. So I, I'm getting, uh, we are also in the association, we get a lot of requests now uh, from established players <coughs> saying, okay, if this is not coming through, like in the fund business, 
and this is big for Switzerland, fund distribution. If you go through that business and see how many people or parties are touching a fund, sell and buy, that's scary. And everybody gets a percentage here or there, a basis point, etc. And that's something I would say uh, is, is being discussed already, that mm -hmm. this is something that will be simplified. Um, I have a long list of questions, but I could uh, probably eat up all the time. We've we've come up to seven o'clock, so why don't I ask if there are any audience questions before I go on too much further? In the back. Yep. Hi, I'm Zach from, from Blockchain Company. Mm -hmm. So we just arrived in Zurich like two days ago. Welcome. And I was just wondering, like, um, I know Switzerland has been like very uh, encouraging for the blockchain space. Um, I was just wondering, like, how does um, Switzerland see uh, ICO in its own territory um, because uh, Switzerland has been trying to position itself as like the hub for foundation and stuff like that. But what about uh, ICO in its own territory? So just to repeat for the audience, uh, how does Switzerland view ICOs in its own territory, not just internationally? Right, like yep. Swiss company uh, doing ICOs in Switzerland or Right. International companies are raising ICO mm. funds uh, in Switzerland from Swiss national or Swiss companies. I think all those companies Yeah, I think uh, if we look at Swiss, uh, most of the, uh, <coughs> the companies raising um, capital are early stage startups. And I would say there are significant number, it's a significant number of Swiss based uh, companies that are coming out of the um, University of Lausanne, for example. Ambrosius is, is uh, something locally. Or, uh, like uh, Marco Abele, the former head of Credit Swiss Digital Banking, oh, yeah. no? and uh, yeah, there are Swiss players try to raise capital, but they are not limiting themselves to the Swiss capital market. They're going through a global um, capital pool. There's some restriction. Certain countries they're not raising. There's there's so much complication and so on, and then they have to do this from a KYC perspective, but. Um, but what I'm saying is um, Swiss companies are embracing, startups embracing this. And now what I see now, even later stage companies that are um, already raised, uh, raised 30, 40 million and are established players for five, seven years, now considering this because uh, there's a significant effort if you're in that position to raise capital every year. And it takes sometimes 50, 60 percent and more time of the executive <coughs> to find the right VC, uh, find the right deal, having discussion about influence, share class discussion, and they want to have. A, they see this as an alternative to focus more on product development, and do this through ICO in a very professional way. They want to do high standard from a KYC AML perspective. They want to provide transparency. They even even considering security or some some other token that are, uh, require uh, more transparency because they have to, they're risking their brand and, and their <coughs> reputation. No? So, but they believe if you do this in a professional way, it, it should be something that somebody should do. Thank you. We have a few more. Uh, Matthew, quickly, and then we'll take one and two. Sure. Um, just to touch upon the point that Gwen and uh, uh, mm -hmm. were, were mentioning, uh, there's, there's no, Swiss wealth management fintech. Um, they are. They are. They are. There's not enough. No, no, you know they are. Uh, what's <coughs> going on then? What, what's what's blocking the system, and what needs to change to 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 get more revenue, revenues or whatever? Here? So it is the same problem. I mean, we are a small market with you know just seven, eight million individuals, uh, three languages and to, to fragment it to make it as, as, a, as a nice target market for startups to address and convince large investors to put a lot of money into building a B2C strategy. So um, capital is, is obviously a big issue here. Capital and, and consumers, we are. Yeah. <laughs> we are not very open to invest uh, lots of money on an online solution, for example. So we are closed from our banks. We are there since 20 years. So I think it's not easy. And the third one, as you say, the banks, the big ones, we would like to have clothes from startups or suppliers of startups for such models. They are not really open. Yeah. 
So you have to go for smaller banks or foreign banks and you lose credibility against Swiss consumers. The, the, there's another point also that we, we experienced. Uh, we've seen many, many B2C companies in wealth management trying to start their business in Switzerland. And they always came to us with that B2C strategy. And if you meet them 12 months down the road, then they go for a white label solution uh, uh, with a bank or a software provider, right? Indeed. So it's also lack of capital, obviously, but it's also a lack of you know, energy and, uh, and, um, yeah, and gut. See, what, what I don't understand, sorry, sorry, what I don't understand about that argument is that we're talking about FinTech. FinTech transcends borders. It doesn't matter if you're based in Switzerland, you've got the world as your market. It's, 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 uh, and, and also you've got access to ICO capital from all over the place. So, so those two arguments, I, I still don't see uh, how, how they properly explain the whole, the whole thing. It's a regulated market, so don't forget if you want to go to Germany or France, it's another regulation. You need another bank, so you but cannot scale. But so that's been for sure the first You have to maintain your customer data here. The so that means you need to have to operate this here. And then the question is, do you have enough scale to have an operation in Switzerland from a customer data privacy perspective? I think to a certain extent, too, some issues around immigration, to a certain extent, limit who can get here. I, I don't know, I'm not aware of there being an investor visa or something like that, that, you know, and the cost of living is also something. A lot of people wouldn't think, let's move to Zurich and Geneva and pay thousands of dollars a month in overhead costs and get started there. Berlin or somewhere else seems to have more available options. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we will hear more about these opportunities in the future. Um, we did have a couple more questions. Yes, just there, and I'll come to you next. Yep. Um, I have a question for Oliver. Uh, besides finance and supply chains, you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, which industry do you believe that blockchain going gonna be, you know, disruptive next? And how Prima are open to what this? Yeah, as I say, if, if I focus on financial services, I would say we will see a continuation of uh, what happened in the cryptocurrency token space. Um, so there are startups like Melonport here that building the protocol, <coughs> the software to run uh, the entire fund administration, fund management. Um, you will see that um, institutional investors will, will come in and, and set up funds, crypto funds, crypto hedge funds, index are building up. Vanguard today um, announced that they will an index on cryptocurrency. So I believe the whole asset management, first focusing on the new um, asset class called cryptocurrencies, will, will explode next year. I think there will be more funds than cryptocurrencies. Because there's demand coming out of the retail and institutional business. And um, this is the reason why we see um, all over the world demand for this kind of funds, even regulatory approved funds. So I believe the whole asset management, investment management business looking just in the financial services will be disrupted. Then the question is, there are already players thinking about what you do with the traditional asset classes, how you bring them on blockchain. But that's a whole di different discussion. And so that's, that's, that's something that I would say. And a plus, I would say, maybe not beginning half year, but I think at the end of <coughs> next year, established um, consulting firms and investment banking boutiques will look into how to bring the IPO knowledge into the ICO business. <coughs> because there, there are economics, etc., that are, I would say, very attractive to you. Challenge, even though Goldman said this year they are looking at the existing 140 steps for an IPO, how to digitalize that. I would go a step further and would even say, you know, there, there are other platforms to do that. Right? So, as I said at the beginning, you not only have to focus on the way how you do this to, uh, today and digitalize this, I think there's a different way, business model coming up. And those are the, 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 the key topics that I would say in, on top of that is um, something that I'm also watching um, so because uh, I've been through this, it's a global payment business. Um, because this, uh, it's, uh, there's a little so much friction in there uh, to do uh, global wires of transfer. It takes multiple days, it costs $30, $50. And um, my prediction is players like Ripple, they have run about five, 10 billion already on their network uh, from a volume, 100 banks, and now they're going through corporates and 
credit cards um, a supplier, you will see more traction on, on the global payments side. Plus, I would say, um, and UBS already started at the trade finance uh, networks. Uh, so, so UBS has started a business network with Kaiser and Commerzbank. You will see also with the, uh, the, there's another network called DTC, with HSB, Deutsche Bank. They have to go to, into production next year. And there will be a lot of learning because it's a platform. You work with your peers, how you make money. Uh, those kind of questions will be being asked, but for the traditional player in that business that has to day-to-day um, -day business, they will see the impact from a unit cost, speed, etc. cetera. So those kind of major trends, are, ma uh, mega trends I can see are that, and um, feel free to go to my latest blog on CoinDesk last night. There are all the predictions for 2018 there. Do you have insurance on it? Yes. I think it's the next one, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe in yeah. two or three years. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The insurance, insurance business, especially the reinsurance companies, have a huge interest um, to move their business on, on blockchain because they have then full visibility uh, on what uh, the, the, the front runner are doing. And um, so I, I see I that even so the, the, if I would say um, from, a, from a financial service industry, the, the, the corporate insurance companies, they are now more, even more committed to, to drive um, uh, an outcome of that. It's a fair, fair point, yeah. We did have another question, sir. Yes. Uh, could you indicate some banks in Switzerland or maybe Liechtenstein who are actually dealing with uh, cryptocurrency? Yeah, there are a few on this. Uh, Fontobel is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Falcon is, is working on that. Swiss code. Swiss code, yeah. So you can trade bitcoins yeah. in Swiss code. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Thanks. Yeah, and then Liechtenstein is Bank Freak. <coughs> Bank Freak, okay. Yeah. Any other question? From, from the beginning, please, again. Fontobel. Uh, what? Fontobel. V O N T O B E L. Okay. Then. Uh, um, Swiss code. Swiss code. Swiss code. Then Falcon. Falcon. Notenstein? No. Notenstein. Notenstein too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Klaus. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I'm Klaus from Go Beyond uh, Business Angel Investing, of Stage Investing. My question about, or well, we had this discussion in our group about ICO. Why, as an early stage investor, so what are, what are the, the arguments to convince us? to invest in an ICO, to buy tokens from ICO. What are currently the, the reasons why we should do this? It's up to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, why ask me? You, you know, for me, no, no. you apply it in the normal, I'm sorry, the normal rigor. Is it, is it a good business plan? Is it a good team out there? No, but I, I think the question is, so, sorry. I think the question Maybe is, on one side you buy shares of the company yeah. and you have and rights you and governance, yeah, and on the other share, side yeah, you have yeah, nothing. Yeah, there, there are over 20, 40 different token types. Uh, I think I see more trend into more security type of, of, of tokens than you have. Uh, but I think, I think at the end is the utility token is becoming uh, um, a huge demand because uh, at the end, the companies don't want to talk about share classes. <laughs> but, I mean, if I see how much effort we put in in a decision to invest, you know, and, uh, and I thought that we understand how we can support the startup on the, on the early stage, that's as well an important part normally for, for early stage investors and as well for VCs. And I, I get every, every week maybe three or yeah, four yeah, ICOs yeah. around me to ask for money. Uh, and they sent maybe a uh, 10 pager and, and then there's the link where I can uh, send the money. Yeah, I, I think, the, the yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think you should, you, and then, as I said it before, these are high risk, you have to apply the same rigor than uh, if you would invest in a normal stock. <coughs> right. And I, my projection is also that, prediction is that um, uh, we will see something like a rating agency, somebody, you know, if you want to get serious money, you have to get certified for your business plans, your your team, etc. Has to be even part of your smart contract that this can be traceable. That's something I expect in the next yeah, 12, 18, 24 months. I think this will mature, has to mature, and people that are not up to the standards to um, you know uh, right now it's 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 a bubble because everybody see the. 
the currency going up uh, and more demand and, and this is like again like 20 years ago you know you and I invested in startups and and then you have to find a way to the right timing to get out of that no? so uh, like 20 years ago and uh, uh, yeah and that will be um, a survival and as I said 80 90 percent will not survive because I would not even touch them because uh, it would not follow my standards. So I only coach and mentor people if there's a serious plan, if the team is good, the technology is good, and there's a potential business out there. Then I commit. The rest is just a waste of time. But you commit without, without any rights. You just commit on the, on the, the belief I do. that it's going to go in the right direction yeah. and the token and the value, etc. will come. Yeah. It's, it's really more on like an IP or you know, in, in buying shares. Uh, and not not expect a, a multiple. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not like an IPO. In an yeah, IPO, you own rights. You own rights. Yeah, yeah, okay, you okay. You have right. more. It's, it's, it's very different. So, so, so but you don't but, have rights. But, that's but I'm, what I'm saying is the techniques in my IPO to build a book yeah. of business. Mm -hmm. You will see more coming into the ICO business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah. So I think stick to your standards. And and if if the and there are good companies out there. Um, if we could have foreseen this year, we probably would have called it the ICO and blockchain year, the the kind of year of blockchain. Um, looking ahead to 2018, can we have some predictions about what are the major themes, one or two that'll be out here in Switzerland? Stock market crash. Stock market. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The crash. The crash. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas? You mean fintech, yeah? Your question is fintech. Yeah, yeah. What's the story of the year for 2018? <coughs> Let's dream a bit. Wealth management. Okay. Great. Good answer. And Oliver, last word. Uh, just looking <laughs> at my, my eight prediction, Your but blog. I think in my blog. <laughs> 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 you should have checked uh, it out. Really no, I think I want to repeat <laughs> myself because I, I, most of the, the, the topics I already explained, I think we will see um, the whole. Um, I see all business be more professionalized. I think, uh, and we have, and we have to find the balance between uh, regulation and, and innovation. Great. Okay. Well, I think we've had more than enough inspiration for a conversation following up tonight. I want to thank our three panelists for taking the time out of their very busy schedules. Thank you all as well for coming in. Uh, we do have wine for each of you. I won't, I won't prance it all over, uh, but we'll uh, give you that after uh, afterwards. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Danny, uh, and thank you again to the audience. That's thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you.